Gary Simon here of designcourse.com. Today, we're going to be redesigning a header navigation uh, for a website. So I previously in our first episode, which by the way, I meant to do more of these. This is only the second episode of a series I'm calling Revised, where I redesign or basically revise existing designs. Uh, it could be anything from logos to websites, etc. The uh, first episode was based on a logo redesign. Um, now this time we're gonna be redoing a uh, navigation. So uh, just to show you this site, uh, it's right here. And I found this site, I went to Google. The first thing that came to my mind, something completely random was uh, horseshoes. So this is one of the advertisers. And uh, upon looking at this site, this is the first site I checked out. I was like, okay, well, we definitely have uh, some potential here for improvement. Um, so the part we're going to be focusing on is just this part and above. So basically the logo, uh, this area, this area, and the navigation here. And the ultimate goal is to try to reorganize and condense some of what we see here uh, so that it just functions better and it becomes a better user experience for the visitors. So um, something that's very strange right off the top of my head is looking at this, uh, of course it's not responsive, it's probably an older site, um, is how the logo, if you look at the logo, like right here it's left aligned as it should be, but then you pull it over here to the right and it's just like sitting here at a very strange position. It should always be left aligned. Um, but there's a number of other issues though with this header. Uh, there's a lot of clutter going on. Uh, you can barely see the navigation. It's kind of tucked away there. So there's not much white space uh, in, in this design. So what we're gonna do is just try to real quickly redesign it um, to make it better, much better in fact. So what I'm gonna do here in Adobe Photoshop, just go to File New. And by the way, we're not going to be doing any HTML or CSS. This is solely just going to be a mock-up, uh, specifically focusing on the header. So the width here, I'm just going to I'm just going to use 1280 and 720, just to make things simple. So everything else remaining the same. Uh, background content is transparent, you know, whatever. 72, of course, is important for the resolution for web, and hit OK. So we're at 100% uh, zoom, that's what we want. If you're working on a smaller resolution, you may want to scale down the size of your document, go to File New again and make it uh, something maybe like a 900 width. All right, so I'm gonna fill in the background with white here um, because that's what their background predominantly is. And I'm just gonna get their logo real quick. So I'm going here in Chrome, I'm just gonna right click and copy image. So I'm gonna paste that, Control V. It actually shows up larger than on their site, so they're scaling it down. So I'm gonna scale it down as well just by hitting Control T, holding Shift, left click, and maybe somewhere right around here. And hit Apply. All right, so something right around here would be uh, would work pretty well. Now, obviously, when you're positioning uh, elements, you know you want an equal amount of white space uh, between you know the, the the top of the element and the left of the element. So you know, imagine for a second that you know this is the top of the browser and this is just the left side of the bar of the browser. This is where we want this to be. So let's come back over here and. Let's just think about a couple things before we proceed. Uh, it seems like they're trying to provide users with a, a lot of information that they necessarily don't really even need. So they have this uh, shopping bag portion over here. It shows you how many items are in your bag and the subtotal. Uh, that's nice, but you know, a first-time visitor, you don't even need this uh, this information. Now I realize they're probably using a um, an e-commerce CMS. Um, there's a lot of them out there. And so, you know, maybe this design is something that they didn't necessarily design. It just came as a template, depending on which e-commerce CMS are using. Uh, but still just, just ignoring all that, I'm just going to critique this, you know, as is. So, you know, you don't necessarily need this, uh, off the bat. So we're going to scrap this whole area right here. Uh, we're going to scrap this view shopping bag. Uh, all we're really going to have is a my, my cart, uh, link. And also the login here is kind of redundant because they have my account right here. So, you know, if somebody wants to log in or access their account, they can click on my account or log in. So these two things are redundant. We don't need those. Um, so the view cart, that's going to change to my cart. Uh, the checkout, kind of redundant as well. You know, if you click on my cart, that's usually where you access the checkout point. So it's, that's a little bit redundant too. So we're going to get rid of that. And we're also going to... Uh, in order to really bring emphasis to the navigation, we're going to shift it over here to the right and right align it. So we'll focus on that right now. So we have also a big no-no uh, that they have going on here is these links right here, even though they're just text and there's nothing that's different about them um, in terms of graphics, 
in aesthetics is their images. So that's a big no-no. You want those to be um, actually HTML text. So I home about us, contact us, and my account. All right, so I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to use Source Sans Pro Lite size. Uh, font I always use pr practically for almost every video when it con concerns HTML just because you guys probably already had it, have it and it's a nice font of uh, those of you who have watched already. So if you want that font, you can just Google it. It's free uh, and download it. So I'm just going to type out those links, home, and I'm going to put it in a certain amount of space in between each one of these, maybe right around there, about us. And then just to make sure we have even, even spacing, and I'm going to take this portion over here, copy it, paste it two more times. Um, take the move tool and move this over here. We'll also increase the font size after I adjust uh, a couple things here. Contact us and then my account. All right, so the font size, you know, right now it's 15. Let's try taking that up to maybe 18. And I think right around there will work for now. Um, you know, I may, I may actually want to make this a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll stick to 20. All right. And take in the space uh, just a, a little bit between these. There's a little bit too much room, I think. So I'm going to take this in. All right, so I just deleted five backspaces essentially from there. Uh, so yeah, I uh, notice how this uh, guide kind of shows up. These are something that you can um, turn on or off uh, in terms of view over here. Uh, but this just lets lets me know, you know, how we can line these up. It's actually a little bit underneath this portion, but I'll just push it up with my arrow keys just a bit. Okay, so we're gonna have a secondary navigation to take care of uh, this portion right here, the number, the phone number. Uh, because right now it's just kind of slapped in the middle. It's not positioned well. We're also going to uh, put in the My Cart and a search area over here because, again, they have a search box. It's kind of tucked up here. Um, I think it could be definitely be designed a little bit better. So we're going to duplicate this, uh, this text here. So I'm going to hit Control Shift and D, and that showed up on my other monitor. And I'm just going to move this up and we're going to use a, faller, uh, a, faller, a smaller font size for this, uh, maybe somewhere around 16. And I'm going to put in call 1-855, or wait, no, it's 888, their phone number, 51-depot. Uh, All right, so we're going to move that right here. And actually, I may make this 15 or so. We're gonna make this, I didn't realize this wasn't black text. It was kind of like a dark gray. A gray. And so this one is gonna be the grayer, kind of a darker gray text. That way there's a little bit of, uh, you know, aside from a smaller font size and these being capitalized, um, this will be a little bit slightly less contrast. That way we can create, you know, a difference or a separation uh, in terms of visual hierarchy between these two uh, elements, these navigations. Um, I'm also going to put in over here, my cart. Now to the left of these is going to be a search box. Now I'm going to design two different variations of this search bar and I'm going to come over here just by holding left the left click and or left mouse button rather and choosing rounded rectangle tool with 10 pixels on the radius. All right so uh, I'm going to get a very light f3 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 gray for the for the the foreground fill color, and I'm just going to left click right around here. Okay, so we could just barely see a, a very light search box. Now, my idea behind this is by default, it won't in initially show this. I uh, what it will be is it'll be co collapsed almost to a circle, circle, and inside of it, there will be a magnifying glass that a person can click, and then through the use of something like jQuery, it can automatically or JavaScript, it can automatically kind of just display and push out the full text bar. That way we can keep things nice and simple and condect, condensed initially. Uh, so I'll go really quickly and design a uh, magnifying glass icon using the ellipse tool. Coming out here in the center, holding shift and alt. And we'll get rid of the fill. So, and give this a, I think a two pixel black 
circle right there. And then we just need to get, uh, we'll use the rounded rectangle tool just for a very simple handle. Control T, hold shift, make it at a 45 degree angle. Select the move tool at apply and move this over here. You can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to get that position correctly. Take both of those layers right here, holding shift, left clicking, and control E will merge them. All right, so now we have our magnifying glass icon. Looks pretty good there. And this is what it would look like when it's expanded after a person has uh, clicked in it. So this is where right here the blinking little cursor will show up and they can type whatever it is they're searching for. So I'm going to move this over here and this is what will be shown. Actually, before I do that, we'll take uh, both of these and hit Control G to group. We'll call this expanded search. We're going to duplicate that or you can right click and hit duplicate. And I'm going to hide this one and we will move over. Probably should name those so it's easier to discern what's going on, but that's okay. Let's move this over here. And I'll take this with the direct selection tool and just hold shift and move this over here. So it becomes really like a button. So now we could take this text layer over here and when you specify auto select layer, um, it just makes it easier to select and specify whatever layer you want. Uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit more room between these, move that over, and we're going to give these uh, icons as well. Now this time I'm not going to sit here and custom design icons for my cart and a phone. Uh, so instead, just because I don't want this to become an icon design tutorial, instead I'm going to use a site called iconfinder.com and I'm going to search for cart and under price we're going to use free choose no link back and we could choose any one of these I uh, you know this is isn't actually a live project so I'm not gonna worry too much about it 20 by 20 I think that'll work PNG download that control a control C to copy and then control V to paste and stick this guy right there all right and then a phone icon so let's go find that real quick phone Free. I wish it remembered what we did, but that's okay. Uh, this one looks pretty decent. We'll use that one, PNG. Click on it, open that up. Now you have to set your uh, your file preferences uh, to use Adobe Photoshop when you click on those, so that may not work as easy for you. We'll move that over. Uh, yeah, these are okay for now. Uh, this one, if I double click the layer, yeah, you know what? Actually, I think it does look a little bit better if it's gray because this one's black and this one's gray. So we'll take this one, double-click that, and we'll do a color overlay, make it this color so they're the same color. There we go. All right, let me get rid of that thing. All right, so yeah, uh, let's go ahead and real quick, we're almost done, uh, take the rectangle tool, and I just want to create a separation between you know what is the, the header, and where is the content area? So I'm just going to left click down here and just draw out an area that's slightly larger than our canvas. And now we can see what this looks like and how this header went from this, like all of this cluttered mess up here, down essentially to this which is much more modern, much more simplistic. We could do a couple, a couple other things, of course. I uh, take this and we can highlight which link is currently, or which page you're currently on. Drag that here beneath there. Maybe move this up just a bit. So yeah, there's a number of things that you can do um, in terms of bells and whistles, but essentially this is, this is largely what I would do in terms of a modern simplistic flat design sort of approach. Now the logo, there's a lot of work that would be need, need uh, you know, that needs done on the logo, but again, I don't want to spend all that time uh, doing that. But yeah, essentially, like I said, uh, what we can do to make this a little bit more obvious is let me just go ahead real quickly and hit Alt and print screen to create a screenshot, put this to the very top 
and I'll just select the inner portion or the the, the portion that re, we that we redesigned right here. Hit delete, and we could see, you know, clearly a big difference in terms of the amount of clutter versus non clutter. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Please check out designcoursecom premium where I train you and teach you and mentor you one-on-one -on, -one on how to become a better designer. Uh, also, make sure to subscribe, subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't yet, and check out uh, the Facebook and social media page. Everything's linked down below in the video here in uh, the description in YouTube. All right, so look out for the uh, 16th designcourse.com design challenge as well, which should be coming up in a day or two. All right, goodbye. See you later.